right, so we're here at Franco's Speed Shop. Got this really cool C10. And this is Gabe right here. Yes, sir. How's it going? Good. How about you? Not bad, buddy. Got some beautiful weather out. This is my 1977 Chevrolet C10. It's been transformed into a drift sled bucket. <laughs> it's got a carbon fiber wide body kit that it's kind of fresh on the market now. So they're available. No Sense Custom makes those. And they are partnered up with Muncie Speed. So they're very quality, full carbon, no fiberglass inlays, and they come out beautiful. Super lightweight, give a truck a whole new look. Other than that, man, there's a whole bunch of metal work going down into it. Were those uh, carbon fenders like made off the shelf or they're custom? So they're custom. Muncie Speed actually makes stock carbon fenders for these trucks. But with me having angle and drifting and wanting to have a wide body setup, months or no sense customs decided to make their own molding, and this is what they came up with. So this is actually the second set that's available. Okay. Have they designed a, a previous one before this? Mm -hmm. So the first set he designed for his truck, and they came out beautiful, and that's what the moldings were based off of. And that's what now we have these. And now I believe he's going to be putting these into production for other people. Oh, yeah. Was the previous one he designed like as aggressive with like the flares and how wide it is? Yep, everything was the same. He just did his and kind of like got a feel for it and everything turned out good. Body lines and everything were amazing. Which is awesome as he kept the main body line that these trucks have and then like kind of how you noticed he incorporated some other body lines and just gave it a real good feel to it. Cause you see more like rounded wide body kits I've seen on some of these trucks that people have designed and they kind of just don't look like they flow as natural. This still has that like square body look to it, I feel like. Yeah, this one literally follows the body line where the original body was. Right. Yeah, and that's, there's really only one body on this truck. So for him to actually incorporate it and have it look this good and true, it's a really big, like nice quality touch to it, I think. Are these quick releases right here? or They're semi-quick, semi quick Quick releases, you still have to screw them off like normal threads. Mm -hmm. So there'd be a plate on the backside with a rib nut, and then you just unscrew them. But I could have all four fenders off in under 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, it's quick release. Yeah, these look nice too, those, um, these ones right here. Even mm -hmm, the nice billet finish. Kiwi Tech makes those. Same person that makes the handbrake. He does a lot of CNC machine parts. It's another off-road company, but the quality of their products is hands down some of the best stuff I've seen, so I would like to run it as much as I can. I used them as well previously, like when I did the dash, I mounted them with those fender washers as well. And then the same with like the trans bezel removal right there. So how much of the C10 is actually like left, like original? Uh, the original track would be the doors. These are still untouched. And then the exterior of the cab. Okay. So all the floor work. All the floor work, the firewall, the trans tunnel all got rebuilt by myself. And the main reason was for that was when I did the roll cage, I didn't want to cut the top and have to re-weld the roof back on and all that. So I cut the flooring out and dropped it down lower to weld the top sides. And then trying to fit bucket seats in these trucks, if you know how they are factory, there's, it's hard. So cutting the floor out was kind of a nice option for me. And with I also pushed the motor back about six and a half inches. So with doing that, I was able to make my own firewall and trans tunnel and kind of make things where I wanted it. How much did you drop the floorboard from the original on? So this would still be about the same height, but this hump originally would probably come up to about here. Oh, wow. So it came up a lot. And then if you were trying to mount a bucket seat without even a roll cage, your head would already be at like the roof of the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And then if you put in a roll cage, you add in a helmet, you have no headroom. So in my eyes, I just wanted it as low as possible. And all the framework, the factory frame rails would be about this height as well. So I tried to keep it all at frame height in a sense. Yeah, it looks like you got a lot of room in there too, but it could be deceiving. <laughs> yeah, now even for my little ass, like I'm not the tallest person. I sit in here and I've got miles up here. Yeah. So we're good with the helmet. I've had bigger riders in here and they, I've never heard them hit a helmet or nothing like that. That's a really nice cage too. This was the first cage I ever built. So before I even like knew what I was doing in a sense, I kind of just freehanded it and built this. 
and it turned out really well. I really like one of the main features I wanted was like door bars, just because I thought they were awesome to have. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to incorporate like the NASCAR, NASCAR style look to them. So did those, this all ties into the chassis and multiple points. And she's held up for quite some years now. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I like those foot pedals too. Yeah, Wellwood four pedals. <clears throat> so factory, these have swing pedals that would be up, mounted up here off the factory column area. And with redoing all the firewall and the trans tunnel, I didn't really have much of a choice for all that stuff. And I kind of just wanted something compact and out of the way. And this is my idea of something that works good. Except for, only thing I needed to do is make this little heel pad. Just so when you're actually driving, you can have a little resting point for them. But they work really good. It's got a different feel than like a normal traditional swing pedal though. If you've ever driven like normal and then we go to this, it kind of like throws you off a little bit. Just because you're more like having to push into it rather than just pivot your heel. Did it take you a long time to get used to it or? No. Like this being like a drift truck and drifting being new to me at the time, it was all kind of like a learning curve for me. But it all worked out pretty well. So you got the hold fast steering wheel? Yep, hold fast. Always rocking the hold fast. I went with a new, I believe this is a new casino wheel. I had the Alpha before, the traditional one, but I wanted like a two spoke feel. This is a little bit deeper of a dish, so it pushes it closer to me. But I always run, I went with another steering wheel before, and hold fast always feels right, in my opinion. Same with the handbrake setup. I had another one before, but I had to go back to this handbrake just because it felt natural. That's a really big handbrake too, moving for a hydro. So that's built by TV Tech as well. Same company that makes the fender washers. They do a really good job and like just grabbing it. It's not like, it doesn't feel awkward. It's solid. It's good feel to it. I think the rear end might be the gnarliest part of this whole chunk of the track. Yeah. Just because like everything's like exposed and out in the open. Right. Yeah, so this, I don't know if you saw the video, but a couple months back I had a, me and a K-Rail had a nice incident and we actually smashed the rear end quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So the frame didn't really get damaged, but I knew with going to the wide body kit, I wanted to show my business off and all the metal work and I wanted it all exposed like you're saying. Mm -hmm. So I decided to revamp it all do a new ste step notch, all new framework, cage work to tie it all in. And it makes a huge difference. This is really impressive. It was like the first thing I noticed when I saw you at ABS. I was like, it's immediately went to the rear end. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a compliment. I appreciate that, but yeah. so much going on. Is <laughs> yeah. And like we were talking about earlier, it's like, I don't, like the street charts, you don't need to do too much. Like, you don't need a four link in my opinion, three link is keeping it simple and nice set of coilovers and they handle really good. And you said this is a three link setup? Yep. So it's homemade three link design. It's got your two lower links, upper third link, and then in the back you'll have a pan hard bar. So do you have it dialed in to the way you like? So right now that last event was still sprung and adjusted for the weight of the truck before. So I still need to go through and adjust the suspension another few times, hit a few more events, track days, and get it set up right for the new weight of the truck. Mm -hmm. Just cause before the truck weighed about 500 pounds heavier, so it was a big difference. And most of that weight was in the rear end. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> mm -hmm. It makes a huge difference while you're driving, especially with how snappy the truck is and how it's reacting now. Probably feels like a whole different truck. It does. I'm not gonna lie. Saving. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it does now. The only problem I have with the rear end, in my opinion, is the fuel cell. That thing's so old that it's time to get a new one. Do you want to get a bigger fuel cell? Or? Not necessarily bigger, but one that actually has like a correct sponge for baffling and for sloshing. Mm -hmm. This one has some, it's an okay baffling setup, but it's not the best. Especially it's like when you're drifting and completely sideways. Right. You don't want to be starving your engine and letting it go lean. This one, the baffling snapped in it a long time ago, so I had to recently cut it open and fix all the baffling. And still trying to get some debris out of the filters here and there, so it's it's more of a headache. Is this a fully custom fuel cell or is it? It's custom. They made these. I didn't personally make it all, but they made them for these trucks like years ago. I don't think the company's around anymore. But this last, before the last event, 
the baffling with inside of it had snapped and that was just sloshing around and causing a bunch of metal debris and it took out the sending unit so plastic debris inside so i had to cut it open fix the baffling as best as i could before the event to seal it all back up did you want to place it right there at the rear end i like having it in the rear normally these trucks have two saddle tanks so factory the two tanks would be right there in front of the wheels on both sides and for this like if i were to do a rear mount radiator that would be the location for that so i'd keep that up there and fuel cell on the back's not a problem do you think this is the best location as far as like weight for for like weight distribution and all that well since the rear end's so light it's not a bad thing to have some weight back here so it helped for sure i'd imagine it for the best if you were looking for like getting it 50 50 you definitely want to put more weight back here probably put the rear mount radiator back here as well i probably would never be 50 50 yeah. just because the rear end's so light now compared to how it used to be how much fuel does this actually hold? This is a 19 gallon. 19? Wait, Wait, that's pretty big. You eat. It's enough to go to Apple Valley. Yeah. <laughs> enough to have a good time. Yeah. 10 miles a gallon. <laughs> Get up there, fill it up again, go drive with it, and fill it up and go home. And what kind of fuel are you running? On this, I run 91. I still pump gas, but 91. Do you plan on running 91 for a while? or? Yeah, and if I ever went to like LS, maybe I'd do like E85, but mm. more flex fuel setup, but I'm not going to lie, I like having it pump gas it's accessible you don't have to worry about finding an e85 station or race gas anywhere eventually i'd like to go on this but this little small block just keeps on going yeah it's a trooper <laughs> mm -hmm. small watches they make good power for what they are a lot of people dog them but i mean they're reliable in my opinion you build them right take care of them yeah people are still running those especially in drag racing too i think mm -hmm. we can do like a nice set of ads on there nice cam and build the bottom end you and good those are iron blocks, aren't they? The, mm -hmm. the small block 350? Mm -hmm. So like my engine's full iron except for the intake. So the heads, block are all iron. Wow. They're heavy. They're anchors that don't get me wrong. But they're pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, they can handle a lot. They don't rev the highest, but you could build them too. I have my limiter set at 5,500 just to be safe. Wow. But they do what they need. They, they make a lot of good torque. And for drifting, I feel like that's a good thing. You need a lot of bottom end torque. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly rather have low end power than a bunch of like high end yeah. top end power. And most of the time, a lot of people want their shit real snappy off the, as if drifting too, you know, you want it to be torquey and react real quick. Yeah. So it works out. And uh, what kind of coilovers do you say is weird? So QA1 is a big sponsor of the truck and they make all the coilovers for the truck the upper and lower control arms on the front end. They make all the Heim joints as well. So they're a good company, they're a USA. Affordable coilovers and their adjustments are noticeable, which is a big impactor. Like if I, these are dual adjustable, so they have compression and rebound, I think they're 18 clicks per adjuster. So you could really go through and set your settings and find out a good setting for your truck. And they have a lot of different spring rates for them as well. What spring rates are you running right now? Right now, I believe these are 550s in the back. Well, it's a size 50. Mm -hmm. And then in the front, I run an 850. Before, I think we went through like four or five different spring rates before I went to the carbon kit. And we were just trying to find like a stiff enough suspension for the truck to actually like handle without having a lot of movement. But then we found a good spring rate, and then we went wide body. So now we have to change some things up. QA1 makes a good coilover conversion for these trucks. They make a full coilover conversion for the front and for the rear end. And their shit's rad. Like, it works really good. And then with the wheelwood brakes, you could, if you ditch the parking brake, you could run a dual caliper bolt-on for these. It'd be the same thing as this. And they would get act bolted up right here and on the same bottom. Oh, so, so you just have the inline? I mine's in light right now, yeah. Okay. But if you wanted to run dual, you could, and it's all bolt on. Super simple. Something that people wouldn't think about. But because a lot of times, like on the stock rear ends, everybody's like, oh, where are you getting your disc brake conversion or where are you fighting dual caliper mounts? And you have to make all that stuff most of the time. So it's nice to know, like, if you do go with this rear end and you get this brake kit, you could have dual calipers and it's all bolt on. Super easy. Should we go over to the engine bay? Yeah. Well, I would pop the head off. Left.
There she is. <laughs> Get all the smart black. That's your oil cooler? That's power steering. Oh, this one's your power steering. Mm -hmm. And then they also run this like a, like a pressure relief valve. So when you go to full warp, which is kind of common and drifting, you know, it's going to bypass the fluid to go directly to the pump. That way it's just force feeding it. It's not going through the whole reservoir and everything. I've never seen that style of like a power steering cooler. It's a trip. It's like a little thin cooler. Mm -hmm. But they were good. Yeah, you said it was super efficient. Boom, dude. You don't have any problems with steering. Usually, like I'm saying, you go to a van. Full day of driving, too, you're like, all right, steering feels like shit by the end of the day. Yeah. You don't have to go there and do something, but definitely. I feel like a lot of people overlook power steering, too. Like, mm -hmm. They just, like, totally forget about it. Yeah, and you think about, like, power steering, especially with that, when it's mechanical, belt-driven, it's running all the time. So even when your car's just sitting still, that pump is still running. There's still fluid going through the system. So, I mean, they get hot. Any type of pumps and metal, you know, it's going to get worn. Sweet. But, you know, how power steering's, they do a great job. Well, uh, you said they're called how? Mm -hmm. They're right here in San Diego, too. And they're an off-road company? Yeah, they're they're mainly like off-road rally. But they obviously know what they're doing. And is this uh, part of the power steering, too? You know, does that be your reservoir and the little filter for it as well? I mean, on that, that's probably the fanciest part of this thing. <laughs> yeah. Just a power steering system? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, for the motor, it's nothing too crazy. It's still a 350 small block. Mm -hmm. So it's been bored out and stroked a little bit. It's got a cam in there, a little bit of head work. Still maybe making like 350, 400 horsepower on a good day, you know. But that's by dyno by dynoing it, I don't really know the true numbers of it. But I always said I would go to an LS eventually, but this fucker just keeps on going, you know? And I can't be mad. I like it. It does the job. It's all that matters, really. Yeah. <laughs> and for the truck, I mean, it's kind of cool to keep it traditional with an old small block. Mm -hmm. So do the C10s originally come with the small block, or what engines do they come to? Depending on the model, they would have came with the small block or an inline six. Mm -hmm. So like a little small motor. But um, yeah, they came with, some of them came with 350 small blocks and then some of them came with 454, like big blocks or three, the 396s, mm -hmm. big blocks as well. So where did you get this uh, engine from? Was it hurting the truck and you just? No, so this one was, this is actually my third C10. And this motor was something I built a long time ago. Just like one of those first motors I built, learning how to work on cars and shit. Mm -hmm. And it's been, it's had, it had, had gaskets and bearings and a bunch of shit gone through it again. But that's just from years of abuse. Mm -hmm. But I mean, even doing that, you're only spending a couple hundred bucks, you know? It's nothing too crazy to go through it and do a rebuild on them. Most expensive part's the machine shop if you do yeah, do some damage and you need to set the heads out. That was one thing I learned was the first small block I built and revving them. Um, they don't like uh, staying at limiter. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your knees right here? On the radiating. So that'd be the, just the clips for the fans on the backside. And these are like a, they're called like push zip ties in a sense. So right here through the fins, you can just poke right through. These are all hollow. Mm -hmm. You don't really want to poke them too much, but as long as you go through them once and you're not like moving them around and you secure them tight, they don't damage it. Dude, I've never seen that before. Yeah, normally you'd have like a fan trout mm -hmm. built onto the backside and then you'd have your fans mounted to that. I didn't have time whenever I mounted this radiator or I don't know what the deal was, but I just went with a cheap route. So where do you get those clips from? Or does it come with the, the electric fan that you have set up? Sometimes they'll come with the fans or you can get these from like O'Reilly's AutoZone. Oh, they'll look. Yeah, they're like they're literally like plastic. I think they're like five bucks, six, seven bucks. That's cool. I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's super simple to use too. So it's the same concept as a zip tie. Like this side would be the receiver. And then you poke that through once it's long, and then you slip it on, and it's gonna self lock itself and trim them down. Um, simple, just like a universal summit radiator. Nothing too crazy. Oh, what kind of ECU are you running? So it's fuel injected, and it's running a Holly mm -hmm. EFI kit, and they're on little ES ECU and all that. And the ECU is actually built into. I think it's built into the throttle body on these fuckers. Cause this is the whole fuel injection unit right here. There'd be four injectors inside there. Oh, that's through like 
what is it called sniper mm -hmm. the efi sniper kit mm -hmm. so traditionally like on ls's you'd have port injection each injector for each bank mm -hmm. or each cylinder but this one's a throttle body injection so it makes a big difference though because before you have carburetor and like here in san diego you can go from sea level up to the mountains and you'd have to adjust it just because it runs shitty but now with fuel injection, you can go from the beach up to the mountains, and it runs great. And it's decent on gas. I'd probably get like 10 miles to the gallon if I'm driving nice. I mean, city's a race truck. Yeah, <laughs> but she does get driven on the streets a lot. Yeah. It was my daily for a long time. And uh, the way you currently have it set up, or was it was it this? Oh, uh, no, it was a daily like this without the wide body kit, but... Yeah. If times were how they were back then, yeah, I'd still daily it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there anything else uh, you want to show us about the truck? Anything else? Anything special? Maybe when you start it up, give it a few rows. <laughs> I should never do that. Without Ollie display, and they give you a nice little screen, which is kind of cool because. You can go through and see different vitals, different functions. If you want to tune it, you could do your tuning. Let me go on the other side. That's fancy. <laughs> yeah, you could do like different logs for it. You could mess with like your two step if you wanted. You can go and see your advanced fuel if you really wanted to. I'm not a tuner, so I don't mess with shit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's all types of shit. And like you can adjust your idle through this. And it gives you a lot of readings too, the way I leave it. You get to see a lot more shit than you'd ever see with just a carburetor and engine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's fancy here <laughs> too. loud <laughs> she's got a so there's some older adders like sns brand and then they go to each bank has a black widow neighbor hater muffler and those fuckers are really they get the neighbors happy <laughs> and now she sounds good for a small block she's got a different growl and row to her rather than like a ls a traditional noise you'd hear out of old hell yeah dude. this thing's awesome thanks but appreciate you coming down and checking her out yeah man thank you i really no appreciate way, the dude. time always